In the second year of Chongzhen, the Su River crossed through the Ming Dynasty and became a tenant in Shaanxi Province due to food shortages. Stir up the hearts of the people, lift up the pole. Even if the deer is lost, the world will pursue it together. Kill the gentry and borrow land. Issuing bonds and promoting education. Develop industry and train strong soldiers. Overthrow the Ming dynasty and eliminate the Tatars. Keywords of the novel. No pop. Up window in the late Ming dynasty. S. Chasing deer in the world. Download the complete set of. Chasing deer in the world. Text in the late Ming dynasty. And read the latest chapters in. Chasing deer in the world. In the late Ming dynasty. Chapter 1. Endless situation. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1. Endless situation. In the second year of Chongzhen. Sujia village. Baoji county. On the dilapidated cave and thatched kang in the west of the village, there lay a tall but frail young man with a skeleton. Wearing faded linen clothes, covered in patches. Su He lay in bed, lost in thought, just crossing over, digesting memories in his mind. He is currently a 20-year-old farmer in Shaanxi during the late Ming dynasty. The original owner, also known as Su He, worked as a laborer for the village gentry Su Ju's family during idle farming hours. In the past two years, there have been continuous droughts in the local area, and this year there has been a large-scale locust plague, with no harvest in the fields. I finished storing food at home three days ago and only relied on eating tree bark to make a living. The original owner was responsible for feeding pigs in Sujiajuang. In order for his family to survive, he planned to steal some rice bran for feeding pigs. This time, Suju people slaughtered pigs for a banquet, and the pig farm manager took people to slaughter the pigs. He took the opportunity to steal some rice bran and ran home, frightened and hungry, causing him to faint at the doorstep. Suhei turned his head and looked at his mother cooking next to the stove. Su's mother is less than 40 years old, and because she supports this family alone, the high-intensity labor has already made her look old. Su's mother saw Su he wake up with a smile on her face. I don't know how long this rice bran can last, Su he. You can't steal rice bran anymore. It's very dangerous. If you're caught, you'll be killed. Su Li sighed while cooking. The county magistrate has arrived, and Mr. Su is welcoming him. When it comes to tax collection this year, our family has no money at all. What should we do now? Our family's land is dedicated to the people of Suju, and we need to pay 60% of the rent. Why do you have to pay taxes? Mr. Lee from the neighboring village wants 70% of the rent, but there is no need to pay taxes. Their village still has some remaining grain. Su Li took out a bowl of yellow batter from the pot and handed it to Su He. As she walked towards Su He, she looked worried and talked to him about paying taxes. In Su He's memory, not paying taxes is very scary. He would be beaten to death by the government and imprisoned, and no one could come out alive. He slowly ate the rice bran paste with a spoon which tasted very bitter and difficult to swallow. The food cut through his throat like a knife. But this is already a good food, and most of the poor farmers in the village are starting to gnaw on tree bark. Dong. Dong. Kiang. A sound of gongs and drums came from outside, which was a signal from the government officials to announce tax collection in the village. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Sister-in-law, your family is in trouble. An anxious voice sounded outside the door. A skinny middle-aged man walked in, dressed in tattered linen clothes. Su he recognized this person as his uncle Su Wenyu, a blacksmith from the village. Uncle, what happened? 
Quote, Suhei saw that Su Wenyu was panting and about to fall, so he quickly stepped forward to help him. Su Wenyu took a breath and spoke quickly. The county magistrate just announced that the grain tax will start tomorrow. Quote dot. This time there has been another tax increase. I heard the emperor wants to add some Liao pay. They can't see the severe drought and are almost starving to death. There's no way to pay taxes on grain. He looked at Su He and said, Your Excellency has also informed that there is a rebellion in northern Shaanxi. The county magistrate will levy Corps of AE labor to transport grain to the garrison. Our village has 30 quotas, including a nephew. Quote. Upon hearing this, Su Mu's face turned pale and her hands were trembling. Oh my. Think of a way to escape. You absolutely can't go. Your father was conscripted into Corv AE to transport grain to Liaodong and died outside. None of the people who serve in the Corv AE in our village have returned alive. Su's mother looked sad and said with a tearful tone. She watched as Su He's tears kept flowing out. You don't have to worry about being a mother. Our family was hit by a disaster last year, resulting in a reduction in grain production by more than half. In order to pay rent and taxes, our family only crossed this threshold by borrowing from Su Juran, and now our capital has risen to ten tails. If you do corv AE labor and no one cultivates the land, you won't be able to pay the interest. The people of Su Ju will definitely kill me. I am too weak to run. You must run away when you are still young, and you cannot let the Sue family run away. Sue's mother explained the future affairs, knowing that her family couldn't make it through this time and could live one by one. Mother, don't worry. I have a way to deal with it. Our mother and son will definitely live well. Quote. Suhei spoke with a firm tone and full of confidence. He knew there was no way out now when he heard about the court's increase in taxes and his own conscription. In front of him, there were only two paths. Escape and rebellion. Running away as a refugee is not advisable. As summarized in historical books as a sentence about refugees in the late Ming dynasty. When one is old and hungry, People eat each other. Su He can only choose to rebel. He is very confident in the success of the rebellion. Every time at the end of the dynasty, when farmers were forced into such a desperate situation, they would shout out, "The kings, nobles, generals, and prime ministers have seeds. Quote, Su He felt that his success rate in rebellion was extremely high. He is proficient in dragon slaying techniques and has been studying the rise and fall of dynasties and the reasons for the failure of peasant uprisings since childhood. I have read books such as, History of Modern Industrial Development, and, Militia Military Training Handbook. Suhei picked up a bowl of rice bran batter and handed it to Su Wenyu, saying, Uncle, you've worked hard. I'll give you this bowl of rice bran batter as a cushion for your stomach. Quote. Su Wenyu reached out to take it and immediately poured it into his mouth, wolfing it down. Su He looked at Su Wenyu and said, Uncle, your family is also out of food. Quote. In this world, even if I have money, I can't buy food, let alone I don't have money. I've been gnawing on the bark of trees for two days. Now that all the trees have been stripped clean, they are waiting to eat the soil. As Su Wenyu spoke, his tone trembled. He has seen people in the village who are hungry and eager to eat dirt, and they die after eating in the morning and at night. Uncle, if we want to survive, we can only rebel. Success can lead to a full meal. Your family is running out of food, and your aunt and cousin are starving to death. When Su Wenyu heard of the rebellion, his face turned pale with fear and his tone trembled as he said, If you rebel, 
you will have to kill your head. If you can't pay taxes, the government will take you away, and your aunt and cousin can still live. Quote. Upon hearing Su He's words, Su Winyu gritted his teeth and became entangled. Su He saw that Su Winyu was moved, so he continued to persuade. Uncle, starving to death is also death, beheading is still death. We have already reached a dead end, why don't we take a chance? I am now fully confident that working with me will definitely lead to success. Nephew, I can't deceive others. I can't deceive Uncle Yu either. Su He's confident demeanor convinced Su Winyu. Nephew, you're right. I don't know if I can survive tomorrow with a rotten life. But if it goes against me, it will go against me. Quote, Su Winyu also wants to understand why he wants to rebel and kill his head if he can't survive in the present moment. Su He was very happy when he heard Su Wenyu agree. This set of rhetoric can move Su Wenyu, but it can also move others. The oppression of feudal imperial power in the face of death is not a problem. He walked up to Su Wenyu and said, Uncle, go find the other 29 people on the Corv AE list. Quote dot. Tell them I have a way to prevent them from serving Corv AE and sending them to death. Don't tell them about the rebellion. If someone really doesn't come, there's no need to urge them. Everyone has gathered and brought them to my yard together. This matter is simple. Just leave it to me. After Su Wenyu finished speaking, he turned around and walked out. My mother boiled all the rice bran in our house into a paste so there's no need to keep it. When doing big things, we need to have a full meal first. Quote, Sue's mother saw that Sue he was very independent, and she didn't stop him. She couldn't bear to be happy and everything was up to her. She went to the stove to make rice bran paste. Sue he also turned around and went out, looking for some helpers besides those who were conscripted for Corv A.E. To succeed in rebellion, there must be an absolute core. This core must be him in order to grasp the direction of the rebellion. Relying solely on verbal criticism cannot conquer the crowd. He must have a legitimate team. No system. Farming is the main focus. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Rebellion. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Rebellion. Most people in the village have the surname Su, but their relationships also vary. The helpers Su he is looking for are all his fellow brothers who have not yet appeared in the five clothes. He knows the root and bottom of every person, and these people are also poor farmers in the village. These brothers of the same lineage are gradually running out of food, and some families have already started starving to death. Suhei directly called out someone his age or younger than him. Youth have blood, while elders are oppressed by gentry and feudal beliefs, and they have already accepted their fate. Suhei found his fellow brothers to rebel with him, and they were all very afraid at first. But he clarified the interests and made them realize that the only way to survive is to rebel with him. Suhei began to attract them with practical benefits. As long as the rebellion succeeds with me, every family can eat white flour mantu. Everyone can take the daughter-in-law and have a large area of their own land. You will live the same life as Su Ju people. Su Shung was the first to agree. He is the eldest son of the uncle's family and has the best relationship with Suhi. Su Sheng is very sturdy, with a pockmarked face. When he is full, he can hold on to a crazy cow. The rest of the village were afraid of Su Sheng, who had experienced smallpox, but only Su He had the best relationship with him. Su Sheng's statement made other brothers of the same lineage waver and promised to rebel with Su He. A total of 66 young men joined the rebel team. 
Suhei and his brothers searched for agricultural tools that could be used as weapons in various households. The poor farmers in the village are too poor, and most of them are wooden and stone tools. Only a few rusty firewood knives were found. Suhei brought his brothers to his courtyard and first took the big guy to eat rice bran paste. There are not enough bowls at home, so dozens of wooden bowls are made from wood that has been stripped of bark. After finishing a bowl of rice bran paste, everyone's popularity and color improved significantly. There were not enough weapons, so Su he led the crowd to use firewood knives to sharpen wooden sticks in the yard. A wooden stick over two meters long was quickly sharpened into a wooden spear. This wooden spear does not penetrate armor, but it is a very useful weapon against unarmed servants. After Su he finished manufacturing the wooden spear, he brought in the brothers of the uncle's and second uncle's families. Su Hu, Su Ying, Su Yan, Su Q, you guys need to. Quote, Su He instructed them on how to align with him and attract more people to rebel later. Su Wenyu led 29 young villagers to the Su River family yard. Nephew, I have brought all the people and did not disturb anyone else. I also heard that Mr. Su is taking the county magistrate back to Su family village for dinner. Su Wenyu walked up to Su River and briefly explained the process. These people were already frightened when they heard of being conscripted into Corv A.E. Some families have the same idea as Sue's mother, to make some dry food for them and prepare to run away. Upon hearing the news from Sue Winiu, let them seize a life-saving straw in a desperate situation, and no one will give up. Sue He looked at the newly arrived villagers, all of whom were strong laborers with some dishes on their faces. As long as they had enough to eat, they were the best soldiers. Suhei took out a large bowl of rice bran paste from inside the house, and handed it to the villagers. Everyone has their share. I'll treat everyone to a meal first and explain the way to get rid of Corvei later. Suhei saw everyone finish their meal and stood in the middle of the crowd. Brothers, our family has run out of food and is still being conscripted by the court. As soon as we leave, our family will definitely not survive and will starve to death in a few days. Even if Suju people are lucky enough to not die, they will force them to death. Every time there is a major disaster in the village, everyone knows what Suju people do. We have reached a critical moment of life and death. Instead of sitting at home waiting to die, it s better to fight hard and turn against this bastard s court while su he was speaking he observed the group of people who were conscripted into corv a e some of them carefully considered but most of them showed a look of fear these people have been forced into a desperate situation and do not want to wait until death leaving only the path of rebellion but they still feared the court in their hearts and so he could only use more realistic interests to incite these people to rebel with him. Kill the Su family village, kill the Su Juran, seize food, fields, and survive. As long as I obey my leadership, I will definitely lead everyone to a successful rebellion. Enough white flour mantu, and each of us can eat enough. More than half of us, like me, have not yet married a wife. We will divide the land in the future, and even with food and land, we can marry a wife. Suju people have over 30,000 acres of high-quality irrigated land, and they have seized his land. Suhei held a firewood knife in his hand, waving his arms and shouting loudly. The starving poor farmers in Sujia village have no resistance to food and land. After Su he finished speaking, he gestured to Su Shung and others with his eyes. It's already the most critical moment, someone needs to respond and set the atmosphere on sight. 
When Su Shung saw Su He's movements, he raised the firewood knife in his hand and shouted, Hunger to death, killing the head is death, afraid of a ball. Quote, Follow Su He's rebellion, have food, land, and live with your family. Su Hu and others followed closely and shouted, Rebellion, eat your fill. Rebellion, divide the land. Quote, rebellion, live on. Brothers of the same lineage, raise their wooden spears and shout in unison. Follow the Sioux River Rebellion, have food, land, and survive. Quote, Sioux Ergo has a flexible mind and sees this situation. He immediately picked up the wooden spear next to him and raised it, shouting loudly, why are you still hesitating? Serving Corv A.E. means going to die. If you want to survive, you have to go against it. Quote dot. Suhei led us in rebellion, just follow along. Everyone is dead on both sides, what are they afraid of? If they rebel, they will have food, if they have land, and if they divide the land, they can marry a wife. The remaining people also want to understand that if they want to survive, they can only rebel. They also shouted in unison, follow the rebellion of Sioux River, have food, land, and live. Quote, brothers of the same lineage who were on the brink of starvation and young men who were conscripted into Corv A.E., under the leadership of Su He, formed the initial rebel team. Su He looked at the stirred atmosphere and decided to immediately start the first step of rebellion, capturing Su Jiajuang and seizing food. He began to make pre-war arrangements. Uncle Wu Niu and a few younger brothers, please stay and protect your family. Su He was just finding an excuse to keep the weak. Su He asked these young men to choose suitable wooden spears, and if they didn't fit, they could make them themselves. He walked into the house and took out the red wedding dress from the old wooden box, which was the only garment in his family without patches. This is also the only colored fabric in the house. My mother wore this wedding dress back then, which was her family heirloom and was intended to be used for her own marriage. Suhei tore the wedding dress into strips and walked out with a handful of red cloth strips. Sue's mother silently watched from the side, her face full of pain, but she did not stop Suhi. Brothers, tie the red cloth strip around your arm. Anyone who sees a weapon in their hand and no red cloth on their arms, don't hesitate to kill them directly. Everyone took the red cloth strip and tied it around their arms. In ancient warfare, identifying the enemy and ourselves was very important and regular armies wore unique clothing. They are an untrained mob, clearly marking the enemy and ourselves. In a chaotic battlefield, it is very easy to accidentally injure companions. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Attack on Sujiajuan. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Attack on Sujiajuan. Su so he waited until everyone was ready and said with a serious expression, Before we start attacking Su family village, I want to emphasize one thing. Quote, Our team must strictly abide by military discipline. Military discipline is very simple. There are only two rules. All actions are subject to command. Don't be a deserter. Quote, Brothers, it's easy to remember. The first rule is that everyone should listen to my commands. As the saying goes, military orders are like mountains, as long as one command is given, even if there is a sea of swords and flames ahead, one must break through. Article 2. No deserters are allowed. We are a team, a whole. Everyone must abide by discipline and never be allowed to retreat. As long as we have confidence, we can definitely defeat the enemy. Never allow to escape without fighting. Whoever wants to escape from battle, I will undoubtedly execute them. Suhei attaches great importance to the second military discipline. 
and many armies have deserters who have not been dealt with in a timely manner. Numerous soldiers imitated and the army collapsed directly. Any era of military, as long as military discipline and logistics are not disrupted, is a first-class army. Suhei did not want his army to become like the Ming official army and the bandit army, indiscriminately killing the people without any military discipline. This army has just been established, and everything is like a blank sheet of paper. Su he can make it the way he wants it to be. Even if it cannot be compared to the people's army in previous lives, it must also be considered as a bottom-line army. But now it's not suitable to create two complex military regulations, only two simple and easy to understand military regulations. Suhei swung his firewood knife with force, chopping at a wooden stick in front of him, and the stick was cut in two with one blow. If anyone dares to violate military discipline, their fate will be like this wooden stick in front of me. Quote, Suhei saw that everyone was silent, everyone heard his words, and no one spoke out to refute them. He walked to the courtyard door with a firewood knife in hand and shouted, Follow me, live on. Grab food, grab fields. Suhei led his men to directly kill Sujiajuan. He couldn't drag on any longer. Everyone only ate a bowl of rice bran and didn't feel hungry at all. After a while, they lost their fighting power. On the way to Sujiajuan, the large team asked Su Hu, who was following him. Brother, why don't we attack at night? All the servants in Su family village sleep at night, leaving only a few night watchmen. Su He patiently explained, we don't have enough physical strength. Everyone will be hungry for a while, and we won't be able to fight if we're hungry. Quote, most people can't see at night, so there's no way to attack at night. The first thing Su he thought of was a night attack, which was several times simpler than a strong attack during the day. But when he thought about it, he gave up the idea. Poor farmers in the village suffer from malnutrition and are generally suffering from night blindness, where they can see nothing at night. The team quickly arrived at a distance of 100 meters from Sujiajuan. You can clearly see the blue brick courtyard walls and vermilion doors of Sujiajuan. Brothers, follow me. Quote, Su Hei and Su Shung took the lead, with others following behind and rushing towards the gate of Sujiajuan. The servants of Sujiajuan soon discovered them and saw a group of villagers with weapons rushing towards them. His face turned pale with fear and he quickly shouted, something's wrong, close the door quickly. They immediately panicked and started closing the door. Hurry over and don't let him close the door, Su he shouted anxiously. This is simple, it's up to me. Quote, Su Ying handed the firewood knife to his left hand and took out the rope he usually used to tie cows with in his right hand. I saw his arm tremble, and the rope quickly flew out accurately tying it around a servant's neck. Su Ying tugged hard and immediately pulled the servant to the ground. His body was stuck directly between two doors, making it impossible for the door to close. Su Sheng quickly ran to the gate and saw the servant pushing the door. With a wave of his firewood knife, he directly chopped the servant down to the ground. After seeing it, the other servants immediately knelt down in fear and begged for mercy. Brothers, follow me to the village. Su Hei loudly boosted morale. He had the prisoners tied up and left Su Yan to control the gate to prevent anyone from escaping. Su Hei led a large army to directly kill Zhuangzi. They arrived at the main residence and saw five servants wearing knives around their waists escorting two fat men dressed in silk out of the room. These two people are discussing something, with smiles on their faces. One of them is from Suju, 
and the other is a petty official from the county who comes to collect grain. Zhu Li saw a group of farmers holding wooden sticks, standing in a chaotic line, some with a look of fear on their faces. He has seen such scenes many times and thought they were just ordinary tax resistance. He scolded, you bastards dare to resist taxes. I'll take them to jail by the servants. Quote, five officers pulled out their long swords from their waists and slowly walked towards the crowd in a row, with standard long swords shining coldly. Someone was scared and their hands were trembling. The Subai silver carp exclaimed in surprise, there are officers and soldiers here, everyone run quickly. Quote, he threw down the wooden spear in his hand, turned around, and wanted to run away. When Su he saw this situation, he knew he couldn't sit idly by. As long as one person escaped, it would cause a major collapse. He threw the firewood knife out of his hand and cut it right into Su Bayan's thigh. The Su Bai silver carp covered its legs and screamed on the ground. Su He refused to give the young men a chance to react and immediately shouted, Spear bearer, hold your spear and follow me in battle. Quote, Su He picked up a wooden spear, like an official rushing over. Upon hearing his command, Su Ergo reacted the fastest and stood on the left side of the Su River with a wooden spear. The brothers Su Shung and others also reacted and stood closely in line. They lined up in a row, carrying wooden spears and walking forward. The attendant was frightened and sweated all over when he saw this situation. This is completely different from the farmers I encountered before. When they were a little scared, these people would scatter and flee. Thorns. Su He saw that the distance was enough and let out a loud roar, and everyone thrust forward with wooden spears. The sergeant was frightened and retreated in succession. When everyone saw it, they immediately gathered around and stabbed the sergeant to death with spears. Hurry up and save Mr. Su. Quote, At this moment, a group of servants rushed out with knives in hand. Su he gave up the wooden spear inserted into the servant's body and walked to Su Juran with a firewood knife, placing it around his neck. If you want to survive, let the servants put down their weapons. During the Su River operation, Su Shung and Su Ergo also picked up their long knives. Su Ergo directly wielded a knife and overturned the petty officials who wanted to escape. I asked you to collect taxes, causing my family to perish. Quote. Su Shung came to Su He's side and helped him control Su Ju people together. Su Juran saw the knife lying across his neck, and he was so scared that his urine and feces flowed freely. Quick, put down your weapons quickly, Su Juran's voice trembled as he shouted to his servants. Su He saw the servants continue to walk forward and directly cut Su Juran's thigh. Su Juran immediately screamed in agony. Put down your weapons, otherwise I'll kill Su Juran. My servants are afraid to step forward when they are afraid of using a mouse or a mouse. Su Hu led everyone to handle the errands and surrounded the servants. Su He ordered, tie them up with someone, and kill anyone who dares to resist. Quote. He shouted to his servants again, if you dare to resist, I will kill Su Ju directly. Everyone rushed forward in unison, and most of the servants did not dare to resist. A small portion of them fiercely resisted and were surrounded and stabbed to death by the crowd. The long sword that confiscated the servants, most of the members of the team had the right weapons to use. Su Ju and his servants were tied with hemp ropes and Su he asked Su Hu to lead a team to watch them. Su Yan, along with some of her fellow brothers, cleaned up the remaining servants of the Su family village. Su He personally led a large army and rushed directly to the granary of Su Jiajuan. 
In times of chaos, food is the most important. With food in hand, there is no shortage of soldiers, and with food and soldiers, there is everything. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Clear Rewards and Punishments. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Clear Rewards and Punishments. Suhei brought people to the Sujiajuan granary. There were more than ten servants guarding the granary, and everyone gathered around directly. When the servants saw the large number of people in Su River, they knelt down and surrendered with a cold long sword. Suhei asked someone to confiscate the weapons of his servants, and he took the key found in the granary and opened the granary door. The granary is full of wheat, and the golden grains look adorable. Su he estimated that these granaries could hold a thousand stones of grain. One person has two meals a day and can only eat two stones of grain per year. Suhei opened the granaries one by one and found that they were all full. Among them, there are three granaries, all containing aged grains of over three years. Especially in one of the old grain silos, the grains have all gone moldy. Su Juran would rather let the food mold than donate some food to save those who were running out of food. Everyone was overjoyed when they saw so much grain in the granary. Some people forcefully stuff food into their arms, while others mutter softly that they want to divide the food. Suhei saw this situation and pulled out his knife, shouting, No one is allowed to hide food privately. We have one and everyone will receive food. Quote. Obey orders. Anyone who dares to violate will be executed on the spot. He was too aware of these people's thirst for food. And once there was a looting, the hearts of the team would disperse. Su Shung drew out his knife and let out a loud roar. Whoever moves, I'll chop who. Suhei has established credibility among the crowd by attacking Su Jiajuan. There were also Su Sheng and others on the side to intimidate, and a few people who reached out to grab the grain put the grain back into the granary. Suhei breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this situation. If anyone didn't follow orders, he could only take action. He asked the granary servants to find a place to store burlap bags each of which could hold one stone of grain. Suhei commanded everyone to load grain, and they found another ox cart to load ten full carts of grain. Su he asked Su Ying and Su Ergo to lead a team to guard the granary. Su Ying, without my command, no one can take a grain of grain. Su he let Su Ying, who had a rigid and inflexible personality, oversee the granary. In order to prevent him from sticking to self-theft, he also asked the clever Su Ergo to assist. Su Ying said solemnly, Don't worry, no one can take a grain without your command. Quote, Everyone, come with me to the main house. We'll go there and share the food, and everyone can have enough to eat. Su He led a large army to drive the ox cart towards the main residence. He was far away from the main house and saw thick smoke rolling in the northwest corner, where someone was setting fire. Su Hei and his team walked to the main residence and saw Su Yan with a black and gray face. He had just led someone to extinguish the fire. Brother, some families resisted fiercely and knocked down oil lamps during the battle, which caused a big fire. Now the fire has been extinguished. It's okay, Su He asked. Where is Su Bayan? Quote, Su He is preparing to publicly dispose of the Su Silver Carp and maintain the dignity of military discipline. Su Yan looked embarrassed and said, He is a child of Uncle San Lu's family. We are all grandfathers. Quote dot, Just teach him a lesson. I'll let him go. Su He angrily rebuked. How can you make decisions without authorization? How can you continue to serve in the military like this? Quote, he had a grim expression on his face and pulled out his long sword, 
Roaring, Su Shung, take someone to Tai Su Bai Yin to me. Quote. He watched as Su Shung led the people out, knowing that a heavy punishment must be imposed this time. The team has just been established, and it is necessary to achieve clear rewards and punishments. Any slight injustice will cause people's hearts to crumble. He just suppressed everyone's greed with military discipline in the granary. In order to make military discipline deeply ingrained in people's hearts, this matter must also be handled fairly. Su Shung dragged Su Baliu to the courtyard of the main residence. The Su Bai silver carp still shouted, I'm just too scared. Who wouldn't be afraid when they come across a shiny knife? Quote, You're not an official, you can't deal with me. Su He stared at Su Baliu and said in a cold tone, Learn the military discipline once. Quote, I don't know, said the Su Bai silver carp with a stem around its neck, indifferent. Who knows? Shout out loud. Su He looked at the onlookers. Su Hu recited first, and everyone followed suit, their voices becoming louder and more orderly. All actions are subject to command. Don't be a deserter. Quote. The Su Bai silver carp has violated military discipline and the crime is unforgivable. I declare the execution of Su Bayan on the spot. Su Hei raised his long sword and loudly announced his handling result word by word. Upon seeing this situation, Su Bayan was immediately frightened. Su He really wanted to kill him. He pleaded loudly, Su Hei, you can't forget your roots. Quote dot. My grandfather and your grandfather are brothers. I am your brother with blood thicker than water. We are of the same lineage, and you are the most trustworthy person. You cannot kill me. I will never violate military discipline in the future, brother. I will definitely obey your orders. I will never be a deserter in the future. Please spare me. Su He ignored Su Bayan's plea and directly swung his sword to cut it off. Those who violate military discipline should be such people. Quote. Military discipline is an unshakable bottom line. As long as someone in the army violates these two military rules, no one can be killed without mercy. Su He said in his heart, Use your head and let me strictly manage military discipline. Quote. He saw the tense expressions on everyone's faces and knew that the punishment had left a deep impression on them. Su Yan. Su He stared at Su Yan and shouted loudly. Su Yan was so frightened that she immediately knelt down and begged for mercy. Brother, I was wrong. Don't kill me. In the future, if anyone violates military discipline again, I will take immediate action and will never make decisions without authorization. Get up. I didn't say I wanted to kill you. You were wrong, but sin never meant death. Su Yan was confined to the small black room for three days. Upon hearing the punishment, Su Yan wore a smile of survival on her face. Su He arranged for someone to suppress Su Yan into a firewood room and put her in confinement. He is not prepared to use corporal punishment in the army, which will increase the hostility between soldiers and generals and affect the combat effectiveness of the army. It will also lead to the militarization of the army, becoming like the Ming government army and the bandit army, and can only fight battles with ease. Instead of corporal punishment, more humane punishments such as confinement and labor imprisonment are being implemented. Su He announced the punishment and immediately began rewarding. Each member of our team is rewarded with two stones of grain and ten acres of good water for watering the land. Those who have achieved meritorious deeds by killing enemies will receive an additional reward of five stones of grain and five acres of farmland per person. Take a break today to eat a full meal, and start dividing the land tomorrow. After a period of time when the village becomes stable, I will have someone organize a blind date meeting and have each of you marry a wife.
After Sue he finished speaking. He personally distributed the food to everyone's hands. Su Li received the grain and immediately burst into tears. Dad, you left too early. If you persist for another two days, our family will have food. As he cried, waves of crying echoed from the scene. This is all because someone in the family starved to death, and I can't help but think of sad things. After crying for a while, Su Li picked up the grain and ran outside the village. Su Hei immediately stopped him and asked, Why are you in a hurry to run outside? Su Li said with a crying voice, My family has been out of food for three days, and my wife has been weaned for a day. If we don't bring food back, my wife and children will starve to death. You don't have to worry, our family is running out of food. I'll send a cart for you to bring the food back home. Quote, Su Hei asked the person who had finished distributing food to replace the person who was standing guard until he had finished distributing food to everyone. Only half of the people in Su family village were left to guard and organize the property of Su family village. Su Shung and his other half drove the ox cart home with all the reward food. The seven stones of grain that Su Yan deserves and the two stones of grain that Su Bai Silver Carp deserves, Su He instructed Su Shung to personally deliver them to their home. Ten whole carts of grain were unloaded and then reloaded, which may seem unnecessary, but the meaning is completely different. People follow him to rebel and gain enough benefits, so as to strengthen their confidence and follow him down. Let others also see that they are eager to join the team following him in rebellion. Su Hei asked Su Hu to lead people to block all the intersections in the village, and without his command, the villagers were not allowed to leave. If the news of the rebellion spreads one day later, he will have one more day to develop. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. After the war. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 After the War Su Hei felt his stomach twitching again, which was a sign of hunger in his body. Fortunately, the battle ended quickly. As long as they drag on for a while, their combat effectiveness will plummet. He immediately arranged for someone to cook and steam more mantu with white flour for everyone. Su Hei is preparing to interrogate Su Juran. Tables and chairs were placed in the yard, and he sat in the main seat, using goose feathers dipped in ink as a pen. The interrogation needs to be recorded, and only he can read in this team and doesn't know how to use a brush. He can only refer to ancient Western methods and write with a feather pen. In the future, we will manufacture pencils and pens. Suju people were pushed over. When he saw Suhi, he calmly and firmly said, Su He, please release me quickly. Quote, Our family can give you money, food, and even my woman. But you cannot kill me. I am a Juran, and my son is also a Juran. He serves as a judge in Fengxiang Mansion. If you kill me, you will definitely be surrounded by the official army and there is no possibility of surrender. As long as you let me go, I can act as a matchmaker and bridge the way for you to accept the court's offer of peace. Su Hei watched as Su Ju people reached this point, and he felt a sense of superiority that I was a superior person. He stepped forward and kicked him twice, angrily saying, Don't talk nonsense, speak quickly. Your family's hidden silver, IOUs, and land deeds are all there. Su He directly placed the knife on Su Juran's neck, and the blade had already cut through the skin of his neck. When Su Juran saw that Su He didn't eat this trick, he was afraid that Su He would immediately kill him and only vomited a little bit. Su Ju people have all fallen into my hands, you are not honest. Your family not only has 30,000 acres of fertile land, but also mines in other places. 
Your family only has a few hundred tails of silver. Who are you deceiving? Su He noticed Su Ju's dishonesty and immediately executed him. The Su Ju people couldn't bear to tell where these things were hidden. Su He carefully recorded that this was the capital of the rebellion. Su He will never accept Zhao An. He knows his strengths and weaknesses. Playing with conspiratorial politics, Ten Su Rivers combined cannot play with ordinary governors. He can't compare with the veteran of officialdom. Su He will never underestimate the wisdom of the ancients, especially those who have remained famous in history. Their wisdom will never be worse than him. These people only make foolish actions that will be seen in later generations because of their knowledge and personal interests. The four great classics taught in Chinese textbooks, Water Margin, deeply educate Su He that surrendering is definitely not a good outcome. Su He obtained the desired information and instructed his subordinates to suppress and monitor the Suju people, prohibiting others from contacting them. Su He was afraid that someone might not be able to resist, so he impulsively killed Su Juran and couldn't let him die too easily. The family members of the Su Ju people and other people in the Su family village are also under supervision. According to Su Ju's confession, Su He found the land deed and IOU in his study. Digging more than 10 cellars, more than 300 tails of gold, more than 6,000 tails of silver, and more than 10,000 kilograms of copper coins were unearthed. Most of the money was saved by Su Ju's family for several years, and a small part was collected when he was a supervisor of the county. Su He looked at the money, much more than he had imagined. With this money, we can quickly develop and strengthen the rebel team. Su He personally led the team to move all the money to the main residence and placed it in the previous study, under his personal supervision. Nephew, you're really amazing. Just take down Su family village. I haven't eaten such delicious mantu several times in my life. Quote. Su He had just sorted out the land deed and IOU when he heard the sound of Su Wenyu outside the door. He looked up and saw the soldiers sending him steamed mantu. Upon receiving the news of victory, Su Wenyu and Su Mu rushed to Su Jiajuan. When Su Wenyu saw the mantu, he picked up one and ate it. He ate too hastily and choked and let out a whimper. Su He picked up the teacup on the table with a smile on his face and said confidently, drink some water and eat slowly. From now on, we won't be short of food. Quote. Su He took the mantu and put it on the table. There are two dishes on the table. One is boiled peanuts and the other is pickled radish. I can't eat too much. I've seen people who were hungry for a long time before suddenly developed. He ate three big mantu that day, and was killed directly. Sue's mother immediately spoke out as a reminder. Upon hearing his mother's reminder, Sue he remembered reading from a book in his past life that people who were hungry for a long time would eat a lot of food and eat it to the death. Thinking of this, Sue he immediately became nervous and distributed enough food to his subordinates. They must be very hungry. They will definitely eat a lot and not let them die because they are full. He immediately ordered people to go home to the village and notify everyone that they could only eat half full. Specially instructed to provide them with a detailed explanation of the reasons. Su He and his family started eating. And while he was eating, he discussed some things with Su Wenyu and Su Mu. Mother. There are many maids in Su family village, and many of my subordinates are unmarried. You have been burdened and become a matchmaker, playing matchmaker and bridging for them. Each person can only marry one. Su Mu's role as a matchmaker not only fulfilled his promise, but also prevented anyone from using her identity to force her. Uncle Wenyu, after finishing your meal, 
take advantage of our rebellion and pretend to be the steward of the Sioux family village, and go to the county town to buy saltpeter and sulfur. Buy as much as you have, don't be afraid to spend money. Sue Winiu is one of the few talents in the village who knows saltpeter and sulfur. Now is the era of firearms. With a large amount of funds entering the account, we need to reserve black gunpowder raw materials. Rope guns require high technical requirements, and their manufacturing methods are very simple for bronze guns, landmines, and hand grenades. Su He enjoyed the victory feast, but the village exploded. Su Shung led a team of people, delivering food from house to house with ten carts of food. They naturally spread the news of capturing Su Jiajuan. At first, the villagers couldn't believe it but they saw sacks of grain being moved into their homes. They all know the people of Suju, and even with money, they cannot buy grain from them, let alone borrow grain. This group of people really captured Su family village. Some people are extremely afraid in their hearts, and there are people in the village who rebel. They are worried about their own situation. Some people don't think too much and just stare at their relatives and friends to see if anyone is moving food. Their family has more abundant food, but they can only have one meal every two days. My poor relatives in the past have developed, so I need to go out and establish relationships and borrow some food through personal connections. Su Li carried two bags of grain from the ox cart and walked into the house. Her wife followed behind with her child in her arms. The child's hungry face turned pale, and he had no strength to cry. The wooden door at the entrance of the kiln has rotted and is blocked by a thatched curtain. There is a white cloth strip hanging at the door, indicating that someone in the family has just passed away. The poor farmers and tenants in the village are not as particular as the gentry and they do not have the money to arrange funerals after their death. They were all wrapped in straw mats and buried in a place. Su Li carried the grain into the house and said as he walked, Little flower, what do you think I brought back? Two whole sacks of grain. Quote, we will have food to eat in the future, so we don't have to go hungry anymore. Children also have hope to grow up into adults. I rebelled along the Sioux River in the west of the village and didn't have to go to faraway places to do corvée labor. Our days will get better and better. Su Lee feels very lucky. In this era, being able to eat enough is better than many people. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Commander Su. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6. Commander Su. As soon as the rooster crowed, Su family village became noisy. Suk beats drums and gongs and goes door to door to notify. Su He wants to execute Su Juran in Su Jiajuan. If he has a grudge against other people in Su Jiajuan, he can go and seek justice. Quote, if there is a shortage of food at home, you can go to Su Jiajuan to borrow grain without interest. Su family village is making congee now. Everyone can get a bowl of congee for free. Quote, These news have made everyone in Sujia village unable to sit still. In this era where one cannot afford a bowl of rice a day, no one will spare a free meal. Su Shan Cat, leaning on a cane, rushed to Su family village with a family of five. He was far away from Juungza and could smell the aroma of food. At the gate of Su family village, several cauldrons are cooking congee. There were three lines hundreds of meters long, and all the villagers who could play came here to get congee. There are people holding knives guarding the big pot to prevent anyone from starving and grabbing food. There is a person next to the team who is commanding with a wooden stick. When he sees someone trying to cut in, he directly hits him with a stick. The team is long, but the pace of progress is not slow. 
Su Shan Cat quickly walked to the front. He saw that there were nine big pots cooking congee in front of him. He shook his hands and took out the bowl. He saw that the congee maker had filled him with a bowl of congee. This congee is very dense. There are many grains of rice in it, and the chopsticks will not fall down. The Sushan cat family all served congee and went aside to eat it. He licked the bottom of the bowl clean with an expression of still wanting. Everyone only has one bowl. How great it would be if we were given another bowl. Quote. Su he walked out of the study, and Su Shung was waiting for him with a group of people. Overcoming all the prisoners, let's set off. Quote. Su Hei led his team to suppress the prisoners of Su Jiajuan, carrying several large boxes out of Su Jiajuan. The villagers looked at the neatly arranged team holding weapons. They were chatting and immediately shut up. There is a row of tables and chairs placed outdoors in front of the gate of Sujiajuang. Suhei sat in the main seat, with several boxes placed next to him. Today is an important moment for him to win the hearts of the people and strengthen his team's belief in rebellion. In this era of per capita prenatal education, simple and direct methods are the best approach. Here are the IOUs of the entire village, and I have burned them all now. I declare that no one needs to repay the money owed to Su Juran. Su Shung. Burn all this box of IOUs. Su Shung moved a large copper basin, which contained burning charcoal. He lifted the box and poured all the IOUs into a copper basin, burning them all in one big fire. The villagers saw this and cheered loudly. Every household in the village owes Suju people high interest loans, and now they don't have to repay them all. They felt like a big mountain was being moved away, and their lives were much easier. My name is Su He. You can call me Su Commander in the future. This village will be under my rule from today on, and I declare that from now on, there will be no need to pay grain taxes to the Ming dynasty. Upon hearing this, Su Shan Mao's voice trembled and he cautiously asked, Su, Su, Commander Su, are you saying that we don T have to pay taxes from now on? No, I still have to pay taxes in the future, just pay taxes for me. But this year, s taxes don, t need to be paid, and the grain tax only charges 10% of the local average production for that year. When Su he heard someone say there was no need to pay taxes. He immediately responded, not paying taxes is not feasible. In times of chaos, where there is food, there are soldiers, and the scale of explosive troops depends entirely on logistics. He can only ensure that everyone has land to grow, everyone has to pay taxes, and there are no miscellaneous taxes or assessments. Brothers, fellow villagers, we pay taxes to the Ming dynasty every year. Have you ever seen the people of Suju pay taxes? We don't have our own fields and have to pay taxes. Suju people have over 30,000 acres of land, but they don't have to pay any taxes. Should this Ming dynasty be reversed? The financial system of the Ming dynasty had collapsed, with less than 10% of the land occupied by self-farmers paying taxes. Sujia village is not a suitable place for Suju people, and most of the taxes paid by tenants go into the pockets of Suju people. Gentry who occupy more than 90% of their land do not need to pay any taxes. Merchants who profit thousands of times from farming do not need to pay any taxes. Commercial tax. Mineral water cannot be collected by the court, and salt tax can only be collected slightly. The pirate leaders in Fujian who rely on collecting protection fees receive more protection fees in a year than the taxes collected by damming. Where do the villagers understand this knowledge? Su he spoke it out bluntly. They are not fools. 
they immediately understand who created all the suffering they have suffered over the years. Su Ergo saw that the atmosphere was good, and he had a sudden idea, realizing that it was time for him to make contributions. Supporting the leadership of the Soviet Union turned against the Ming dynasty. His voice rang out, and the team also reacted. They shouted in unison, we support General Su and oppose the Ming dynasty. Quote, the villagers also began to hear slogans, gradually expanding from a sparse group of people shouting slogans to the majority of people shouting slogans. Supporting the leadership of the Soviet Union turned against the Ming dynasty. When Su he saw this situation, he knew that the rebellion was basically stable. He pulled out his long sword from his waist and held it high, saying, Thank you for your trust. I will lead you from one victory to another. Quote, After seeing the crowd calm down, he pointed his knife at Su Ju, saying, Today I am here to make the decision for everyone. Anyone who suffers harm from Su Jiajuang and others can seek justice from me. Quote, Upon hearing Su He's words, Su Shanmao leaned on his cane and said in a mournful tone, My youngest daughter has entered the Su family village to become a maid. Quote, she was beaten to death by the wife of Su Juran, Su Wangxi. Please lead Su to make the decision for me. Leading someone to invade the Su Wang family. Quote, with a command from Su He, the Su Wang family was pushed over. Su Wang Shi, please honestly explain whether you killed Su Shanmao's daughter to avoid suffering from physical harm. Quote, Su Wang looked up at Su Shanmao and said, I've killed so many little girls. Who knows which one his daughter is? I don't remember. Quote, Beautiful little girls deserve to die, wanting to compete with my mother for favor, HMPH. Su Wang's words immediately aroused public anger. Many families in the village sent their daughters to Su family village to pay off their debts. They originally wanted their daughters to have a way to survive, but ended up dying inexplicably. Now hearing what Su Wang said, they roared angrily, Commander Su must kill her and never let the wicked woman live. Quote, Su He saw that the Su Wang family caused a stir in the crowd, so he comforted the villagers and continued the trial. He wants to publicize the bad deeds of the gentry one by one, so that everyone can see their ugly faces. Murders, land grabbing, and forcibly taking other people's wives and daughters have been exposed one after another. The anger of the villagers was completely ignited, and they wanted to rush past the guards and kill Su Juran and others. Su He immediately made people sound gongs to intimidate the villagers, and the guards also pulled away the excited villagers. The following sentence is pronounced. Su Juran was sentenced to death. Su Wang was sentenced to death. Su Ju people's wives, concubines, children, and confidants committed too much evil, and the people were extremely angry. They were all sentenced to death. The executing soldiers strangled them to death with hemp ropes in front of everyone. Su He continues to hear other people from Su Jiajuan. No lives on hand sentenced to labor reform imprisonment. According to different criminal responsibilities, they were sentenced to 2 to 30 years imprisonment. The innocent servants and maids of Su Jiajuang have been released. This simple trial is over, and the guards are clearing the bodies. The villagers shouted excitedly, Commander Su, Su Qingshan. Quote, Su He took out another box and grabbed a land deed. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. Junction. Lone Field. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7. Junction. Lone Field. A stack of land deeds was taken out of the box and filled the entire table. Brothers, today I will fulfill my promise to you. Everyone queue up for the land deed. 
Su Shung. Reward 15 acres of land for his achievements. Quote. While Su he was speaking, he searched for the previous land deed of D.A. Bosu and D.A. News House from the land deed. He took out the seal that the craftsman had carved with stone last night, with the four big characters, Commander Su River, on it. Su he re-stamps this land deed and hands it to Su Shum. Use the damning land lease for waste utilization. The illiterate subordinates are unable to rewrite a new land deed. Su Shung took the land deed and tears involuntarily flowed down his face. This is the land that his family donated to Su Juran five years ago, thinking they would never get it back in their lifetime. I didn't expect to get it back today through my own efforts. Su Hu. Reward 15 acres of land for his achievements. Su He personally distributed land deeds to everyone, and those who did not attend the scene were collected by their relatives. Every person who receives the land deed has a smile on their face. The other villagers looked at him with fiery eyes and deeply regretted not having the opportunity to rebel with Su He. Daniel, your nephew is now Commander Su. The land I rented before has been divided. Can I rent any other land? Quote. Some villagers were worried that they wouldn't be able to plant the land, so they rushed to ask Su Danyu for help. Yes. Daniel, both of your sons have been given land, and your family has become wealthy now. Can you help us ask if the Su River is still receiving people? It's so dry now that we can't plant the fields. My two little brats are both idle at home. Even if we don't give them land, we can earn some food. Su Danyu was pushed by the villagers towards the Su River. He asked nervously, Commander Su, can we villagers continue to rent land in the future? Quote dot. If the disaster situation eases next year, we still need to farm. There are also people in the village who want to rebel with you and your team is not accepting anyone now. Su he saw his uncle Su Danu's nervous expression and said, Uncle, just call me Su he. You don't have to ask me. I'll prepare to speak. After he finished speaking, he invited three people with loud voices to stand in the crowd, repeat what he said, and convey his policies in detail. Villagers, thank you for your trust. Our team has just opened and we will definitely recruit young men to join the army. Let me talk about the salary here. The military salary for joining the army is one acre of land per year, six stones of grain per year, and there are rewards for meritorious service. Quote, those who are injured or die in the military will receive compensation, while those who are injured and discharged will be arranged for work. At the same time, compensation will be provided for 20 acres of land. If someone dies, Su he will support his parents for a lifetime and raise his children until they reach adulthood. The pension will be distributed to 50 acres of land at once. Su he directly stated the benefits of joining the military. He used land and food for military pay mainly because he was poor and unable to afford money. In this era, land and food are more popular, while food in troubled times is more precious. He doesn't have much silver in his hands, and stealing the silver from the gentry's house is not enough to support his soldiers. The fundamental reason was the extreme lack of silver in the northwest southwest and other areas during the late Ming dynasty, leading to a serious deflation state. The southeast gentry engaged in sea trade and obtained a large amount of silver, but they buried the silver underground and had little circulation. In the late Ming dynasty, per capita land was not scarce, but the vast majority of land was occupied by the gentry and nobles. The princes and nobles of the Ming dynasty had hundreds of thousands of acres of land in their hands, and the households of the major landlords in the southeast even had millions of acres of land. 
Upon hearing Su he finish talking about his treatment, Su Li happily calculated, one acre of land a year, 30 years in the army, that's 30 acres. Quote, returning home from the military to become a small landlord is such a beautiful future. Every year, there are still six stones of grain, enough to feed my wife and children for a year. Even if I die, I will leave over 50 acres of land for my family, and I won't lose even if I die. The villagers turned red when they heard this treatment. They know that this world is very chaotic, and human life is not worth money. Exchange 50 acres of land for one life is definitely a big profit. Immediately, a young man couldn't help but shout loudly, Commander Su, I want to join the army. Those who want to join the army should queue up at Su Shung's place to register. Quote, Su He looked at the young people in the village eagerly joining the army, and he felt completely relieved. He has always been worried that the villagers will still fear the court, so he can only run away with his team and look for other places to establish a base. Relying on pulling strong soldiers or coercing young men, like the bandit army, the army lacks combat effectiveness and is very prone to camp howling or collapse. Upon hearing Su He's instructions, Su Shung immediately summoned a few people to review the young men who came to register. Su He has already instructed him on the conditions for recruiting young adults. Age should be controlled between 16 and 30 years old, with no physical disabilities. I am too young and my body has not yet grown. I am too old and have already grown old. The year-round heavy physical labor, the villagers over the age of 40, covered in white hair and injuries, often work hard and die in the field. Su He saw Su Shung recruiting soldiers and continued to introduce his policies. Su Ju people have 30,000 acres of land, and in our village there are 3,000 acres of land. 1,000 acres will be reserved as meritorious fields for the distribution of soldiers, salaries and pensions. And the remaining 2,000 acres will be sold to you. When the villagers heard Su He say this, the scene immediately became noisy. Sell all the fields to whom? Who can afford it? It can't be us. We can't even afford to eat anymore. How can we afford to buy land? Su He killed all of Su Juran's family. Who else can he sell the land to? Silence. Quote. Upon hearing Su He's command, Su Q immediately struck the gong and drum in his hand. Dong. Dong, Qiang. The sound of drums and gongs made the villagers quiet down. Let me finish. Everyone. These lands in the village are all prepared to be sold to the villagers. You don't need to buy it with cash. You can even buy it without silver. Quote. You can rent the land first, and pay an additional 30% of the rent in addition to the annual grain tax. As long as you pay it for 20 years, this land belongs to you. Of course, you can also purchase land at the market price, with a maximum purchase of 100 acres per household. So he stated the land policy he designed. The core of this policy is still the division of land, but it is not a uniform land system, but a loan land system. In this agricultural country with underdeveloped social productivity, no political group can raise land. Without industrial support, agricultural taxes will always be the mainstay. Even Li Juangwang and Hong, who only chanted the slogan of equal land system, failed in history. The King Juang has arrived and will not accept food. Quote. This slogan can captivate people for a while, but this policy cannot be implemented. A false political ideology can lead to confusion and lack of cohesion in the team. The land loan system was a land allocation policy proposed by Su He based on past experiences. Once I paid my mortgage in my previous life, 
I was completely tied to this city and had no choice but to become a social animal if I wanted to run away. Farmers have the opportunity to obtain land for free, so they will never spend an extra penny to purchase land. Farmers borrowing land is equivalent to getting on the chariot of the Sioux River, becoming the most stable foundation of the Sioux River. As soon as the Sioux River policy was implemented, the villages on site immediately became boiling. You can get your own land without spending money, it's just planting for 20 years. Several generations of our family have been planting grain for the Suju people for over a hundred years, without distributing one acre of land. Instead, we have even allocated five acres of land. Ha ha, and this good thing. I want to borrow 100 acres directly. Villagers, you can borrow land and grain from me now. Lending farmland should be done within our capacity. I charge rent at an average yield of 30%, but it's not feasible to leave the farmland abandoned there. If there is no labor to farm and the rent is not paid enough, the land will be confiscated. After Sue he finished speaking, the villagers responded enthusiastically, and most of them signed land loan contracts to obtain their own land. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Training. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Training. Suhei has been busy for two days, finally dividing the land of Sujia village. The villagers were allocated their own land, and some people directly laid grass mats on their land to sleep here. To guard one's own land day and night is afraid of being taken away by others. Some people go with their families to plow the ground, waiting for the rain to come. They plant some carrots and cabbage as soon as possible, so that they can have some food in winter. Suhei frowned as he looked at this piece of land, which had been dry for years and had not rained for a long time this year. The land had already solidified. The small river passing through the village has long been cut off, and there is no mud at the bottom of the river, only a few ravines remain. If it weren't for an ancient well in Sujia village, it would be difficult for the villagers to drink water. During the Little Ice Age in the late Ming dynasty, natural disasters occurred frequently, but he believed that he could lead the people through. After handling the matter of dividing the land, Su he rushed back to Su family village and devoted himself to another more important task, military training. That day, more than 430 soldiers were recruited in Sujia village, and the total strength of the team reached over 520 people. These days, Su he is pondering whether to use the military system of the Ming dynasty or modern times. After two days of careful consideration, he chose the most familiar 333 system. The Militia Military Training Manual provides a detailed introduction to the roles of various units in the military brigade, battalion, platoon, and platoon. Just change the scattered line tactic to a queuing and shooting tactic. The means of training militia can be perfectly transplanted to the young people of the late Ming dynasty allowing the army to quickly form combat effectiveness. The military system at the end of the Ming dynasty was too chaotic, and the generals were unaware of their military skills. The military leaders only cultivate domestic servants, resulting in the militarization of the army. The Waisuo system includes positions such as small flag, general flag, hundred households, thousand households, Wei Commander, and Du Commander. The battalion and army system includes positions such as Commander, Captain, Sentry, Commander, Garrison, Commander, Guerrilla Commander, Deputy Commander, and General. This is just a confusion of official positions, and it's even more terrifying that there is a huge difference in the number of troops among the same general. In small scale warfare, Victory can still be achieved through the outstanding performance of generals. The large army groups gathered for war, 
and their performance directly dragged him down. The modern military system has matured through thousands of large-scale wars, with a concise and efficient command system. Su Hei arrived at the empty space on the left side of Su Jiajuan, where Su Sheng was standing with his troops. The standing posture is the foundation of the queue, and the queue is the guarantee of the combat effectiveness of queuing and shooting. Most of the young and middle-aged people in Sujia village suffer from malnutrition. A few days ago, they mainly had a full meal, and everyone even ate a big fat pig to supplement their oil and water. Starting from today, we need high-intensity training. Suhei stood in front of the queue, seeing the neatly arranged queue, he was very satisfied in his heart, which gave him a somewhat military appearance. Brothers, I am your commander Su. From now on, we need to strengthen training. I will promote some people to become officers based on your performance. Now everyone is running at the same starting line, and if you don't want to be surpassed by others, then work hard to train. As long as you become an officer, you have the right to priority blind dates. If you want to marry a wife, you must train hard. Suhei led the army to enter high-intensity training. Start with a 5-kilometer long run every day, then stand for 2 hours before conducting Q training. Among them, there are also rows holding spears to advance and stone throwing competitions. Turn right, which side is right? The side with the red cloth strip is right. Walk in unison, 1-2-1, one, 1-2-1. Two, one, one, two, one. Quote, Su Hei trained the team to enhance their combat effectiveness, and he was not worried about the attack of the Ming army at all. In the late Ming dynasty, various chaos occurred, among which officials were the most serious in deceiving the upper and concealing the lower. In Shaanxi, the peasant uprising army broke through the county seat and killed several supervisor of the county. Emperor Chongzhen of the Ming dynasty did not know that there was a rebellion. Su Hei will not disturb the troops of Fengxiang Prefecture as long as he does not attack the county town now. At the end of the Ming dynasty, the soldiers of the garrison had lost their combat effectiveness, just a group of farmers holding knives and guns. Only a small number of household soldiers can fight in the garrison of Baoji County. The only Ming army with some combat effectiveness near Baoji County is the defenders of Dashan Pass. The command of Baoshan County in Dashan Pass remains motionless and poses no threat to them for the time being. Over the past seven days, after daily high-intensity training, the military was able to perfectly execute basic commands. Suhei held a flag with a red background embroidered with a golden great wall, which was a military flag. He raised the flag in his hand and walked in front of the queue, the flag fluttering in the wind. The army has also all changed into new clothes, and the earthy yellow linen clothes on the lowest land of Shaanxi are also an excellent camouflage color. Earthy yellow is the natural color of linen fibers and under and linen has the lowest cost. Brothers, after a few days of training, the training effect is evident to all. This is our military flag. Our ideal is to protect, protect our wives and children, protect our land, and protect everything we have. I hope that in the future, we will be like the Great Wall, guarding the land of China. After Su he finished speaking, he placed the flag in his hand on the flagpole in front of him. It fluttered in the wind, gazing at this newborn army. Suhei knew that these new recruits were illiterate and couldn't understand what he was saying now. But with an ideal army and without an ideal army, the ability to withstand war losses is completely different. I only hope to condense its military soul through the refinement of blood and fire, and through generations of inheritance. The military system adopts the 3-3 to system.
Eleven people form a class and select the class leader and deputy class leader. Three classes form a platoon and select the platoon leader and deputy platoon leader. Three platoons form a company and select the company commander, company staff officer, and deputy company commander. Three companies form a battalion and elect the battalion commander, battalion staff officer, and deputy battalion commander. The current military strength only consists of one regular battalion. Two reinforced platoons, reconnaissance platoon and grenadier platoon. Suhei announced the main military officers. I will serve as the battalion commander, and there will be vacancies in the staff. Qualified candidates will be appointed again. Quote dot. Su Shung was appointed as the deputy battalion commander, mainly responsible for commanding troops in combat. Su Ying was appointed as the deputy battalion commander, mainly responsible for military law. Su Hu was appointed as the commander of the first company, and Su Shi was appointed as the deputy commander of the first company. Su Shan was appointed as the commander of the second company, and Wang Heshang was appointed as the deputy commander of the second company. Li Qingmu was appointed as the third company commander, and Su Li was appointed as the deputy company commander. Su Ergo was appointed as the platoon leader of the reconnaissance platoon, and Su Zhuang was appointed as the platoon leader of the grenadier platoon, Su Yan. The third squad leader of the three battalions and three companies, and Zhou Kai, the deputy squad leader. Su Hei announced the appointment of military officers, and based on the training he has received in the past few days, he has selected individuals with flexible minds, diligent training, and obedience to discipline for promotion. Wang Monk did not expect him to be appointed as the deputy company commander, which is a considerable official. He has been living in the temple since he was young. After the war, the temple disappeared, and he begged his master all the way. When he heard that Su Juran's wife believed in Buddhism, he stayed behind to make a living. Su Jiajuang was captured, and without a livelihood, he could only return to secular life and enlist. Upon hearing the appointment, Li Qingmu burst into tears of excitement. A few days ago, I worked as a servant for Su Juran and almost got cut off with a knife. He was a fugitive from the garrison and saw that the recruitment conditions for Su River were very attractive, so he signed up to join the army. I didn't expect to become the deputy company commander, with over 120 people under his command and 100 households at the same level who caused his family's downfall. Su Yan gritted her teeth and saw that her elder brother Su Ying was already the deputy battalion commander, and he was the only small squad leader. I must make some achievements myself, strictly enforce military discipline, and not fall too far behind my elder brother. Each platoon leader leads their own troops to strengthen training. War is very close to us, sweat more during training and bleed less during wartime. Yes. Quote. Su Hei continued to train the army, and with officers at all levels executing orders, the mobilization of the army became smoother. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Gunpowder success. Cannon casting failure. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9. Gunpowder success. Cannon casting failure. Commander Su, there is a significant matter. Quote. Su he saw Su Q coming to find him and asked Su Shung to continue training. He walked towards Su Q. Su Q is only 14 years old this year, and he is too young to go to the front line. He stayed by his side as a messenger. Suk, what happened in the village? Uncle Wu Niu has something to talk to you about. Quote, upon hearing that Su Wenyu was looking for him, Su he immediately rushed to the arsenal. 
Su Winyu is a blacksmith responsible for managing the newly established arms factory. The main projects of the arsenal now are black powder and bronze cannons. Su Winyu led the craftsmen in the village to try to manufacture black gunpowder and bronze cannons according to the methods given by Su He. The caves near the Winyu family in the western part of the village have been transformed into military factories, and all the craftsmen in the village have been recruited to work here. When Su He arrived at the arsenal, he saw Su Winyu with a pitch black face and half of his hair burned off. Uncle Wu Niu, how is the situation now? I'm not saying that black gunpowder has great power, so you should stay away from the experiment. Su He urgently inquired that black gunpowder was crucial to his cause of rebellion. Nowadays, both Eastern and Western wars have entered the era of firearms, and large swords and spears have been eliminated. Queuing for execution is the peak tactic of this era. The technical requirements for manufacturing firearms are high, but the manufacturing techniques for black gunpowder and bronze cannons are relatively simple. Success in trying is delightful, failure is like accumulating experience. With cannons in hand, one has the ability to defend and conquer cities. Otherwise, we can only learn from bandits and rely on the pile of human lives. Black gunpowder has been successful. The formula you gave is too magical. Quote. With a sigh, Su Wenyu took Su He into the cave where the gunpowder workshop was located. Just as I entered this cave, a strong smell of urine came over, making me sneeze. Su He observed the gunpowder manufacturing process, where his proposed assembly line operation method was implemented. Each person is only responsible for one process, which not only ensures the proficiency of the craftsman, but more importantly, confidentiality. The manufacturing method of black gunpowder is similar to the existing methods of damming, with only an improved formula. Because ordinary black gunpowder will separate from each other due to its different weight during transportation bumps. The soldiers received it, but the power of this black gunpowder was extremely weak, and the uneven combustion of the gunpowder caused the firearm to explode. In addition, the corruption of officials in the Ming dynasty led to cutting corners on firearms. The Ming army generally dislikes the use of firearms and prefers to use cold weapons. Su He observed the process of the workshop, and each step was completed according to the craftsmanship. The craftsmen in the village are generally illiterate and lack innovation ability. But following his designed process for simple production and manufacturing, there is still no problem. Su He took the granular gunpowder that had just been manufactured by the gunpowder workshop. He walked outside the cave with granular gunpowder, poured it onto the ground, and ignited it with a wire. Su He observed that the combustion speed of granular gunpowder is very fast, and the smoke generated during combustion is small, with no large residues after combustion. He couldn't help but applaud and praise, saying, Uncle Wu Niu, you have done very well. With granular gunpowder, our team's combat power will be doubled. Quote, the arms factory needs to increase production, producing as many pellets of gunpowder as there are raw materials. Su He was more concerned about bronze cannons and asked, how is the manufacturing of bronze cannons going now? Upon seeing Su He's hopeful expression, Su Wenyu felt a bit disheartened and wiped the sweat off his forehead with his sleeve, saying, Commander Su, the landmines and grenades you asked us to manufacture are very simple. A landmine is a large iron box containing some broken iron pieces. A hand grenade has a wooden handle and an iron head. The iron head is partially cast and has air holes on it, but it is easier to explode. These two weapons can be made by apprentices alone. 
There are many apprentices in the factory, and the output is considerable. Su He listened to Su Wenyu's introduction and was not surprised. Landmines and hand grenades are both monkey version products manufactured based on the current level of craftsmanship. Currently, there are no compression leads or pulling leads, and one can only rely on a fire rope to ignite it. Using them to deal with the soldiers of the damning guard is already powerful enough. Su Wenyu continued to introduce, the casting process of bronze cannons is very difficult. Based on your ideas, I have chosen various methods such as mud mold, sand mold, and bronze mold, but the bronze cannons produced are all unqualified. Quote, Su He was not surprised at all by the failure of Su Wenyu and his team in forging cannons. Su Wenyu is just a blacksmith in a small village, and usually makes some iron agricultural tools, with limited skills. What problems have you encountered? Su He asked directly. I have encountered too many problems, and I basically don't understand anything. I still need to find a craftsman who can cast cannons to guide us. The bronze cannon we cast is full of air holes on top, and it explodes when fired. Relying solely on the strength of our village cannot produce cannons. Su Wenyu directly stated that his level was not enough to manufacture bronze cannons. Without making excuses, if it's technically not possible, it's really not possible. I see, Uncle Wenyu, do you know anyone in the county who can forge cannons? Quote, Su He was very satisfied with Su Wenyu's answer, and managing the arms factory was to be more practical. In our county, only blacksmith Zhang from the guard can cast cannons, and he can cast ten cannons and nine rifles. But when he was drinking, he revealed that the iron material for only three cannons was given to him, and he couldn't afford to make up for it himself. He could only cast it to make ends meet. Upon hearing Su Wenyu finish speaking, Su He now understands that he can only temporarily give up casting cannons. If the technical level is not enough, it cannot be forced. What he understands is the direction of industrial development. Su He knows very little about specific technological issues, with only a little knowledge left, which cannot match the productivity of this era. The casting gun can only be started when there are enough talents. Uncle Wu Niu, your arsenal is currently producing large quantities of granular gunpowder, landmines, and hand grenades. At the same time, you melt and cast all the copper coins into bronze blocks, which will be used as materials for casting bronze cannons in the future. Su He instructed Su Wenyu arsenal to carry out the next work. Su Wenyu widened his eyes and said with heartache, so many copper coins, all of them have been melted. This is all money. Quote, only by casting copper coins into bronze cannons can their maximum value be realized. Uncle Wu Niu, you don't have to worry about money. Follow my orders Su he ordered with a serious tone. Casting bronze cannons is about burning money, but there is no other way. They are rebels and force is much more important than money. Bronze cannons have many advantages, such as being easy to cast and not easy to explode. The storage of raw materials is abundant, making it extremely easy to obtain copper coins that are commonly used. Its biggest drawback is the use of money for casting, which is too expensive. The smelting technology has not been improved producing cheap and resilient steel. Bronze cannons will not be eliminated. Cannon is the god of the battlefield and the most powerful weapon for attacking. Without artillery at hand, they would not be able to capture the fortified cities and passes. The Ming army has cannons in their hands. If they don't have the means to compete with the Ming army, then we can only learn from bandits who wander around and cannot defend a stable base. 
Without a stable base for rebellion, it is impossible to farm, carry out education, and develop industry. There is no logistical support, it's too difficult to win the battle. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Amazing Power. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Amazing Power. Su Ergo is driving a fat pig and chatting with Su Juung. Juungza. What are these iron boxes that Commander Su asked us to transport for? And this wooden handle hammer. It's too light. It's just over half a pound. It can kill people. Throwing a hammer at someone is not as convenient as cutting with a knife. What does Commander Su ask us to do? Let's do whatever we want. We have three meals a day and can't even stop you. Quote. Su Juung impatiently replied that he didn't appreciate people like Su Ergo who relied on flattery to get to the top. You're really boring. Quote. Su Ergo noticed that Su Juung didn't like to talk to him. So he turned around and chatted with his subordinates. Su He saw Su Ergo driving pigs over. And they brought over landmines and hand grenades urgently produced by the arsenal. He is preparing to adapt the military to the power of firearms and proficiently use landmines and hand grenades. Su Ergo. Tie the pig to the tree on the small hill ahead. Quote. Su he asked Su Ergo to tie the pig to a tree 300 meters ahead. When Su Ergo returned, Su he began to introduce landmines and hand grenades to the army. Provide a detailed introduction to several classic uses of landmines and hand grenades. After listening, Su Ergo asked in disbelief, Commander Su. Can this little thing have such great power? Quote, now is the era of firearms. If we want to succeed in rebellion, we need to manufacture more advanced firearms and unleash their power. Speak with facts. Landmines and grenades are not very powerful. Just give them a try and you'll know. Suhei led the army to dig a trench first. They stood 300 meters away. But Su he couldn't fathom the power of three pounds of granular gunpowder. If we don't take precautions, the fragments from landmine explosions will not be good enough to harm them. The excavation speed of the trench is very fast, with a depth of one meter, and people can bend down to hide in the trench. Su He took all the platoon leaders to lay mines together. The landmine arsenal has already been manufactured. As long as the fire rope is inserted into the fire hole, there are clips outside the fire hole to prevent the fire rope from falling off. Landmines are buried directly under pigs. Tie long strings together and extend them to the trench. Don't stick your head out. Everyone get down and prepare to report it to me. Get ready in a row. Quote. Second company ready. Three companies ready. The reconnaissance platoon is ready. Grenadier platoon ready. Quote. When Su he heard that everyone was ready, he took out a fire folder and lit the fire rope. A fire rope is made by wrapping particles of gunpowder in silk, which burns very quickly when ignited. The fire rope emitted a subtle hissing sound as it burned. Boom. A loud bang came and those lying in the trench could feel the earth shaking. The lifted loess on top of their heads fell down, leaving everyone covered in loess. You can get up now. Let's go and see the explosion effect. Quote. Su he shook off the yellow soil from his body and led his team to the explosion site. A small pit was directly blasted out on the ground, and the fat pig had already been shattered. Even the small tree next to it had been blown away. Su Ergo's eyes widened and he trembled as he said, The landmine is so powerful. If a person were to be on it, it wouldn't just explode. Quote, Su Shung's eyes lit up and he was pleasantly surprised, saying, With the immense power of landmines, place them where the enemy must pass. Quote, 
If a landmine is suddenly detonated, the enemy will definitely be in chaos. If they charge forward, they will surely win. Upon hearing Su Sheng's words, Su He immediately praised him and said, Su Sheng is right. Landmines are now very effective in ambushing enemies. Quote, when the pressure lead is studied, landmines will be placed around the camp, and anyone who steps on it will explode. As long as we set up a minefield, we are not afraid of enemy raids. Su He looked at the crowd who had been shocked by the power of landmines and had gradually recovered. Let's try the hand grenade. It's too heavy now and weighs half a pound. Others mainly use hand grenades for defense, such as standing on city walls to bomb enemies or standing in trenches to bomb enemies. The average person's arm strength cannot throw a grenade too far, making it very easy to injure themselves. The soldiers in the grenadier platoon have amazing arm strength, and they mainly attack with hand grenades. Suhei introduced the function of hand grenades to everyone. After hearing this, Su Juan understood their positioning. The people in their lineup are all the top performers in stone throwing training. He is the first one himself, able to throw a half pound stone ball to 80 meters. The ordinary soldiers in their platoon are generally able to throw half a pound of stone balls over 40 meters. Suhei began training soldiers using the hand grenade training method recorded in the Militia Military Training Manual. They first dug out a divided trench. There are no trenches in front of the soldier, but trenches are all behind him and on both sides. Soldiers can throw grenades forward, even if they fall under their feet due to nervousness, they can jump into the trench to avoid danger. Suhei plans to first serve as the platoon leader of the church company, and then let them lead their squad leader, who will then lead the soldiers. Do not ignite the grenade for now, everyone is proficient in the operation of the grenade. Wait for everyone to adapt and start practical operations. Suhei will first demonstrate to everyone, lighting the fire rope that leaked from the grenade. There is a fire rope inside the wooden handle of the hand grenade. After detailed calculation, the burning speed of the fire rope is 6 to 8 seconds to complete. The grenade was thrown out by Suhi, over 50 meters away, and exploded upon landing. The grenade exploded 10 meters around and shrapnel flew over, leaving people either dead or disabled within this range. After Su he finished his demonstration, he began to have platoon leaders of each company drop bombs while teaching to prevent accidents from happening. The first few people all successfully completed the bombing, and Su he saw that the third platoon leader Li Qingmu was a bit nervous. His muscles tightened and he was ready to rescue at any time. Li Qingmu, the third platoon leader, was holding a grenade in his hand and feeling very nervous. He followed the steps to light the fire rope, but because he was too nervous and had no strength in his arms, he threw the grenade directly at a distance of more than five meters from him. Li Qingmu seemed stunned and stood still. Su He immediately rushed over, and he and Li Qingmu rolled into the nearby trench, followed by the grenade exploding. Li Qingmu got up and said with a shy face, Commander Su, I was wrong. I didn't react just now and felt like my brain was blank. Quote, Su Hei patted the soil off his body and encouraged, It's okay, you're all new recruits. As long as you train more, you'll become proficient. Quote dot, no one is born with it. I will teach you now and later you will also teach your soldiers. Suhei led the army to train for three days, and everyone in the army was familiar with the use of landmines and hand grenades. The army is standing in a military posture, and the piercing whistle is ringing. Suhei looked up at the village and only saw black smoke rising in the north direction. 
This is a signal of the attack on Sujia village, transmitting the enemy's situation through whistles and fireworks. After the rebellion was successful, Su he sent a platoon of troops to blockade Su family village. Now it seems that the Zuli, who had been missing from Sujia village for many days, did not return, and the county finally sent someone to investigate. This time was seven days slower than Su he had anticipated, giving him the opportunity to train. Now that I have landmines and grenades in my hands, I am not afraid of the county government and army. Gather and support the north of the village. The army quickly assembled and ran in neat formation towards the north of the village. Block the previous chapter and add another chapter. I don't know what the problem is with that chapter. The time it came out is unknown. End of this chapter.